WebbleRescue.com. My name's John, I'm joined today by Richard from uh, Weber Rescue UK. What we're going to be looking at today is the new twin saw, uh, designed and made by uh, Weber uh, for new selection patients. Uh, what we decided to do this is with the onset of new uh, vehicle technology, bottom stills, etc., there have been trials ongoing with the use of this cutters and anchor drivers. Uh, for those of you who used them before, you'll know that these saws obviously throw out a lot of sparks, a lot of vibration, and can be very aggressive. Um, so therefore we're going to look at a new twin saw, hopefully that will alleviate a lot of these problems and we'll go around and do some cuts on this vehicle and see how effective it is. Uh, Richard's just going to give you a bit of technical input on how the saw works. Yeah. Thank you John, very much. Yeah, specifically designed for a uh, rescue, uh, but to make it easier really. Quite unique, two, two cutting discs on the saw. Quite revolutionary, rotating opposite directions. We've got one, one blade rotating clockwise and the other one anti clockwise. The result is a rescue saw that has less sparks than most conventional circular disc cutters and reduces kickback as well when starting up going on the core. So, relatively lightweight, 9 kilograms, good voltage, available at 110 volt as well. So, it's a perfect rescue saw for uh, modern day problems. Excellent, as you can see there we've just gone straight through the A-post, yeah, there was a bit of debris and bits and pieces flying around, but with the correct PPE and casualty protection, it shouldn't create too much of a problem. Uh, I was looking there, I didn't see any sparks or anything to worry about too much, and um, we'll see how we get on with some more cuts. Again, as you can see there, we've gone straight through the seat post and part of the door frame. Again, very quick, nice clean cuts. You do get a little slight smell of burning, but nothing that you wouldn't get with a reciprocating saw. Um, again, very minimal debris being thrown off, and realistically, hardly any sparks. Uh, so, yeah, so far, very impressive. Okay, what we're going to attempt to do now, which we haven't done before, is we're going to go for cutting a door hinge um, using the twin saw. Um, we've managed to get access to the rear door hinge, as you can see, and we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and give that a cut, see what happens. I don't know if we'll get a good zoom in there or not. There we go, door hinge has been cut through that. Again, nice clean cut, it didn't take too long. Again, the problems you have with hydraulic cutters these days, depending on how new your cutters are and the type of door hinge you've got, that may hinder your cutting the door hinge and you might have to go for the spreading technique. However, with this saw, it's irrelevant of the type when construction of the door hinge, we can go straight in and make the cut. Um, yeah, it's quite a lot of noise there. Um, again, with all incidents, we do like to try and keep the noise to a minimum for the comfort of the casualties. However, where an execution is needed, it's also paramount that we're able to get the cuts and space created to get them out. So sometimes perhaps a bit of noise, we might have to just put up with it. Again, something for debate, something for you to think about. Okay, right, as with all videos that we do when we're evaluating new pieces of equipment, I myself are going to have a go. Um, as I've always stated, we haven't done any preparation here, nothing's been pre cut, it's purely a raw car, uh, what it says, what you get. I'm now going to have a go and cut the door hinge, as we just saw Richard do earlier. Um, I've just had a little quick go because I haven't used this saw before. It's a very easy bit of kit to use. Um, one of the things I also like 
voice a lot of concerns with the amount of power these types of saws can throw out. And we don't want any accidental operation of the blades, etc. Fantastic to see this saw has actually got a little locking safety switch on the main operation button, so you can't actually actuate the saw until you flip the little catch. Um, very easy to use, but it's not an accidental operation. Also, the operating switch doesn't lock in the on position, so once you let go, it'll stop. Right, I'm now going to have to go cutting this hinge. Um, let's see how we get on. into that quite aggressively. Uh, very little kickback from the saw. Uh, really relatively easy cut there. We've gone quite through quite a thick pass of the cast metal. Um, again, yeah, there are bits of shards of debris being thrown off but correct PPE and coastal protection um, doesn't appear to uh, be too much of a problem. Um, I'm now going to carry on, do a few more cuts around the vehicle. Okay, what we're going to look at now, obviously, it's not demonstrated so well on this vehicle because the size of the base of the B post isn't as large as we're going to find on the newer vehicles on the road today, such as BMWs, Volvos, Mercs, etc. Um, what we're going to do is obviously, again, another problem we face with our hydraulic cutters. Um, don't get me wrong, this isn't against hydraulic cutters, they do a fantastic job, but just as another alternative technique. Sometimes if your blades aren't big enough on your cutters or they lack the power where you've got new vehicle technology and high strength metals down there, it can be quite awkward to cut out the base of this, especially working around seatbelt pretensioners and any other safety devices fitted in there. So what we're going to quickly demonstrate here is just doing a horizontal cut straight across the base of this B, uh, base of this B post just to show you how easy that will be. Not as power horizontal as really liked. Um, not a good start. What I'll do is I'll just come in quick cut here and we'll take that piece away and see what it looks like. Again, as we say, nothing we're doing here has been pre planned or pepped or rehearsed because we want to show you the realistic use of this brilliant tool uh, rather than just showing you everything working spot on. And when you get to use it for real, you think, what the heck are we talking about? We have cut around and we have avoided the seatbelt seatbelt pretensioner. Um, probably not the best demonstration for cutting the base of the B post there. Um, but I'll put that down to the fact of this is the first time I've ever seen and used this saw. Um, I haven't had any previous training or practice on it. Uh, so as you can see there were a few problems there. Probably down to my handling and skill issues. So uh, Richard C stepped in, um, had a little go at the last cut. Weren't really any major problems there, it's probably just boils down to, as I say, first time for me, not very experienced with this saw, but I'm pretty confident that after a few training sessions, uh, cuts like that would be a no problem whatsoever. Um, overall, fantastic bit of kit. Um, I know we've, we'll probably open up quite a bit of debate debate for use at uh, RTCs with debris, a few very minimal sparks compared to angle grinders and the likes. Um, but as me and Richard were discussing earlier, a fantastic bit of kit that we could use for um, times when we do have problems cutting through things. It's another tool that we can use that we know can cut these metals. Um, and can be used obviously at all other incidents, train incidents, HGVs and other such heavy rescue incidents.